Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, good my name morning. is my name is Jeronimo Fumera Jr., but for short, you can call me JR. And I am a 32nd Baptist missionary. I was assigned in the Philippines at the Maguete, which is the small municipality of uh, Sambuangita. And then after my one year in the Philippines, I able to extend for another year in Romblon. I served as a missionary in the Philippines for two years. And then I'm so grateful that God has, you know, inspired me a lot to do his work. After that, I had my co-missionary that was uh, from China. And then her name was Lily Duan. I cannot forget her name. She invited me to come to China to work as an English teacher. And then with all God's guidance and God's grace, I was able to work in China as an English teacher for seven years. And it's very hard and difficult in that, in that, in that country because you are not allowed to preach the gospel. You are not allowed to share the gospel in the church or around you. It's a big, big no in the contract that you are not allowed to do so. If you are going to do it and then someone will know, you will immediately send back home and you will be blacklisted. And then on my last year, there was one like, uh, how do you call this one? One student that went to the church and my boss already told me, don't go to church. If you will go, you will be responsible for your action. But then this one African girl, she went to the church and then the, four, the officers of that city able to know that she was in the church. Immediately, the policeman went to the church and then they caught him, they caught her and she was being brought to the prison and then she stayed there and then after that she sent back home to the to the country where she belonged. It's like, you know, there are places and situations that we cannot really freely share the word of God and it's very difficult. And that's what my experience in China and then we have brothers and sisters there. But then, you know, it's a big, big, big no that you are not allowed to preach the gospel. And now currently I'm so happy and I'm so blessed for sharing my testimony. And currently I am here in Thailand. I am working as a missionary. And then I came here by the grace of God, which is, I didn't have any money coming here, but through the grace of the Sulad's missionary, they sponsored me. And I am thankful that I am here. And I would like to share my testimony just currently. And so Wilbert, Wilbert was with me when we went to a certain orphanage and I am offering my, you know, myself as a volunteer there. And then that orphanage was like, I really, you know, uh, inspired to visit there. I traveled by motorcycle going to that city around two hours, one way. And then here comes this one, one Christmas season. And then me and Sir Wilbert, uh, able to visit there. Sir Wilbert, I would like to, you know, include you in my testimony because that, that moment was a blessing for me. And then Sir Wil Wilbert and together with his group, we invited them that we could be able to share something, some, some snacks, some school supplies, some other things. You know, they are the orphans here in Thailand because there are so many broken family here in Thailand that those children, they don't have nowhere to go. And then this orphanage was taking care of them. And when we went there, like, this is a Buddhist country and many people doesn't know about God and they don't believe God. And my presence there was like, I would like to teach them about English. I, will, I would like to teach them about Pathfinder and then Bible study. And then one moment that these young people, we, that we said like, okay, it's season of love. We will going to visit houses in the evening and we were going to sing songs to those people and it was like our first time my first time to to go to house to house in the evening and singing christmas song because this is buddhist country it's a very big no to do not many people are doing this kind of stuff and then when we went there we feel the like the season of christmas the season of love the season of sharing god who is 
the savior of all. And then when we went to the houses, from one houses to another, it's like I feel, wow, Lord, I am so blessed. I am with these orphan people. And then when we went to that houses, we sing to that houses. When in the Philippines, mostly we sing, we expect something in return. We expect some money and something that they could return. But when these orphan kids, we prepared and then they prepared like they were going to sing song after singing in the philippines i'm not sure if we could offer a prayer or some kind of testimony or talk to the person that we are singing with but this group of us when we sing after we we sing the song of christmas we pray after we pray we ask how is the family how is the situation of their life and after that we have something that you know that uh we offer to them we have uh some food that we gave it to the family that that we visited and then my heart was i said lord i'm so blessed by this moment that like these people are not christian or you know they don't believe they don't know you but through the song and through our presence they feel that there is love in their heart that people care for them and then after we sing after we gave something we didn't know that that house also prepared something for us for the for the orphans they they gave us some some kind of uh, snacks or some kind of food and then that thing like wow i said lord it is really true that if you gave something you will also sh- share something back and then i think on that night me and sil wilbert and the other volunteers like wow i could really express the happiness that i was feeling and then we went from one house to another house to another house and and i think we sang and i think four or five houses i couldn't count there's a lot of blessings that you know i had experienced like that that place that ministry that we had like inspired me to do more to serve god unselfishly and then like i had that, that was my first experience that i was beer inspired and then here is the second that a miracle that happened uh together with some of my missionary that i am with we visited a certain place and we decided we were going to offer some literature okay like the uh health books the other books that we could share to the people and then this uh certain uh how do you call this one moment that i i feel the presence of god was there because when i asked my 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 friends missionaries i told us i told them okay we need to bring some books but as much as possible hopefully we could bring some health books and then okay okay they get some of the books and they were already prepared and they told us, they told me sir where are we going i said we go to some villages a small town a small place in the you know remote area and then when we went there oh it's very far and then i said where should we go oh we'll go to the market because there's people there but the moment that on that market i didn't realize that there was a big boat temple that was there and it was close to my school that i am working with and then i asked the people that with me sir do you have the health books that we are going to share uh when they said sir i'm sorry it's not the health books that our supervisor able to give us it's the book of great controversy and i said what why why is not the health books because I know what the content of the great controversy is all about Christian, the history of Christian. And then those people are near the temple and they're Buddhist. And I, my heart was really, really pounding. Like, should I do this? Should I give this book? Should we do this distribution? Because maybe the people here are the parents of my students. And when they read the book, it's all about Christian. They might report me to my school that I am working. And then when the school director knows about it, they will tell me, JR, why are you Christianizing these people, these Buddhist people? You are not allowed to work here. You will be out of work and you will be, you know, moved out from the school. And that moment, I was thinking of this negative thought, like, what should I do? Do I, do I need to do this? And then here comes the power of the Holy Spirit, you know. It's very near the temple, near the market. And then one of my friends, fellow missionary, went out and just gave freely the book. And then, what? What are you doing? Please stop. And then, but then that moment, I really sincerely pray, Lord, give me courage, give me ways that I could reach out to these people. And when we try, 
when I just move out and then go and give these books. And then I was thinking, what should I do to uh, make this ministry become effective? And that moment instantly, the Holy Spirit was like descending upon me. And then he was telling me like, JR, you have a blood pressure, BP apparatus. You're a nurse and you have some herbal medicine. You can use it to offer these people in the market near the temple to have a blood pressure taking and check if they're high blood or whatsoever. I couldn't really speak Thai because they are Thai people. And then at that moment, the Holy Spirit was convecting me to do it so. And then I did it. And then here comes the situation. I was in the market and then there was no place that I could put my apparatus and medicine. But here comes another, you know, person, a Buddhist people selling something. He said, Many, 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 lay, lay, lay. Uh, I was talking Chinese. <laughs> Come here. And then the, he offered the table that he was selling. He offered the table that there are some things that he was selling. Come here, come here. Use my table and uh, do what you can do. And then I was like, okay, come here. And then many people, I couldn't speak, but I just showed them the apparatus. And then, oh, the people were like, okay, this one, this one. They, they're giving their hands. And then like, okay, me, me, me. And at th that moment, like, I didn't know really what's going on. Like, the people are like a little bit aloof. They don't know. And when they read the book, it's about Christian. But then when I offer the, the health message to them through blood pressure, people are rushing in and they're just like coming and coming. And like, me too, can you take BP and BP? And then there was one woman. I didn't know that she was high blood. When we tried to buy grapes from her, like, she felt it was all okay. But when I checked her BP, it was... 200 over something, 100. She was very in high blood pressure. And then I didn't know when we were just talking and I was buying her grapes. And then, like, later on, she felt, oh, I have had, like, kind of back pain. And then when I took her BP, it was too high. And then later on, wow, Lord, thank you for this opportunity that I could, you know, offer some help. And then, when I took her BP, I have some herbal medicine that was garlic capsule, and I told her to take it immediately. I gave her around three capsules and take it immediately. And then after a few minutes, five minutes like that, I told her, have a rest, and then after that, I will take your BP back again. And then after that, when I took it back again, her BP was in a normal, normal uh, measure already. And then that moment, you know, when we were taking BP, a lot of people are coming and coming and coming. And then at the end of it, we distribute the books. And then we brought around 41 great controversy books. And it was all gone. And then there was another people that was telling, Sir, me, me, book my, me, book my. They're like, they're asking in Thai, do you have some more book? Do you have some more book? I want to have some. I want to have some. But then the book was already given. And, and that, in that instant, that moment, like I was afraid. I was like, Whoa worried my own like selfish you know thoughts like i cannot do it and i was afraid to lose my job but then on that certain situation you know god moved god used the holy spirit to to inspire us to encourage us and then that day that moment i was very you know eager and it was very moved that the holy spirit is always with us and this is my short like testimonies. I have a lot, a lot of testimonies that I could share, but you know, uh, hopefully next time I could share it more. But I would like to share to you here in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 10, if you have your Bible with you. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. This is a very important text. It says here, Romans 10, verse 14, How then they call on him in whom they have not believed, and how are they to believe in whom they have not heard? And how they are to hear without someone preaching? In verse 15, it says, And how are they to preach unless they are sent? In verse, and continue, As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Brothers and sisters, this moment, this morning, I'm so inspired. I'm so happy. I'm so glad that our God called us to become a missionary. I am a 30-second batch missionary. And if I could, you know, turn back the time, I go back to where I was before. 
I would really love to become a missionary again and serve the people in the Philippines and wherever country. Because when I work in China, I will tell you, brothers and sisters, I could earn around 70,000 pesos or 60,000 pesos. But still, the satisfaction, I could have gadgets, uh, clothes, eat delicious food, go everywhere. But it doesn't really satisfy us. The real satisfaction that God could give us comfort, peace. You know, when I was a mission in the Philippines, three, I think that was how much was the stipend? I was 3,000 or 2,500. It was very small. But I was so satisfied. I was so happy that I could help even the people. And here in Thailand, I could earn also like a little bit more. But still, you know, compa comparing to the ministry that we could offer, God says here, how then these people will know, will hear about Jesus if we will not tell them and if we will not go and offer them the message of God. Brothers and sisters, I would like to share it to you and to inspire you. And I would like to sh offer you a short prayer that all of us, as what our chanting says, once a missionary, often a missionary, wherever we are, we could share to become a missionary. Shall we pray a little bit? Lord, Father in heaven, we are asking, Lord, that you will bless us, inspire us, Father, that these missionaries, through our online worship, through our online Bible sharing, and even to hear that testimony that you have inspired us, O oh Lord, revive us with the Holy Spirit that will continue to preach the gospel to those people who doesn't know you. Lord, we want that you will be soon, you will be soon come because of this tragic situation. There are so many people dying, not knowing you. Many suffering that we are experiencing, Lord. But we are grateful for these calamities because we get to know you more. We get to have a chance to connect with you. And especially, Father, to go out and preach the gospel. Lord, you have called us to become your missionary. You have called us to become your servant to become your sons and daughters and that heavenly home you have prepared for us. Father, have mercy on us, O Lord, to respond to this call that you want us to do. Time is very short and many people are dying not knowing you. Bless the country of Thailand, bless the country of Philippines in Vietnam and all over the world in America. Help us to strengthen our faith into you and to answer the call. Whom shall I send? And hopefully, Father, each one of us will answer once again as a missionary. Here I am, Lord. Send us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you.